What's going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in terms of my trades, as well as talking about some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, you guys in particular guys, in this month of September in 2019. And if you guys want to skip to the you guys part, for those of you guys that are not interested in the market update and other stocks that I'm watching, there's going to be a timestamp down below in the description, so you can go click that and go to the part that you guys saw in the title and that you guys want to see. So without further ado, guys, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me, and let's get right into the topics of today's video. So the S&P 500 ended up closing the day down $20.19 today, down 0.69% closing the day briefly above 2906 or rather slightly above uh, 2900 rather at 2906 the NASDAQ right now guys is currently down 50 cents but this is the future if I pull up on my phone very quickly where exactly it uh, ended up closing I can tell you guys it was down 88 points down 1.11% on the day the Dow Jones Industrial average here down 285 points at the close down 1.08 percent closing the day at $26,100 so overall today guys the markets were affected by the tariff situation that went live the tariffs went live between the U.S. and China on September 1st we saw the futures go down on Sunday the futures were down on Monday which was yesterday when the markets were closed and that kind of bled into the market today and we saw the results of the day down one percent roughly and uh you know all of the major indexes that we track on this channel being the dow the s p and the nasdaq so if we go back to the s p guys to break down some technicals here and starting off on the one day actually maybe the five day five minute you guys can see we close the day on the 30th at about let's say 26 or rather 29.25 and you guys can see the gap down very clearly um, you know from the close on Friday to the open today on Tuesday we gap down to about 29.07 we dropped all the way down to about 28.92 found a bit of a support at around 28.90 28.95 and then we ended up closing the day on a nice little upswing and some may argue you know the technicals don't lie here that this is a higher low from the previous and this could be a potential breakout spot for the S&P 500 and if we go to the 20 day one hour you guys can see that a bit more right we can see even if we extend this trend line a bit you can see actually no that's not a good spot to start it let me start it down here you can see that we kind of are holding a uptrend pattern here based on the past couple of weeks. From the 15th of August, we bottomed out at 2824. Then we bottomed out at 2860, 2875 towards the end of August, right around this area, this range right here. And now it seems like we're bottoming out here again on the 20 day, one hour chart on top of these moving averages, the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA, as well as on top of that 2900 level of support. And I was talking about um, the 2900 uh, level of support in the group chat today in the discord chat and if you guys are not in that that is linked down below and I was talking about how this is a very critical level of support for the S&P 500 just take a look over the past couple of months 2900 2900 was a resistance here we broke above it making it a support we pulled back we retested it we popped up we ended up breaking it here in the month of May we popped up above it held it again as a support back in June June, right we popped up to all-time highs to 30 uh 25 there and then for a little bit we held it here um you know at 2900 as well until ultimately we broke down and triple bottomed at 2850 um you know during the month of august and now it seems like again we're retesting that level and the fact that we closed above it despite us falling below it today in the market during the trading session that's a really good sign here that the s p does want
on to potentially rally back. Again, we saw in the five day, five minute, you know, this is looking pretty good. The fact that we double bottomed here, we broke above the 50 SMA, that's a good first sign. Now, I would love to see a break out of the 180 SMA here on the five day, five minute before really confirming that hey, we might be breaking out here. We may be pushing up maybe to 29.40 again, maybe to 29.50. We might be pushing for a higher high. You know, that's kind of what I'm watching here um, in terms of the S&P 500. If we're going over here um, to the NASDAQ and we start on the 184 hour, you guys can see, you know, Unlike the S&P, actually, let me just double check that before I do make that statement. Actually, no, the S&P is still trading below the 180 SMA, but it's trading above the 50 SMA. So it's actually trading below only one of the moving averages. But the NQ, right, the NASDAQ's actually trading right now below both of the moving averages on the four-hour chart, both the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA. So in my opinion, for NASDAQ, right, to get back up to highs here, to get above or rather just to break out at this point, you know, we need to get a break above that 50 SMA and the 180 SMA that you guys see here on the 184 hour chart. Overall, you can argue that we're holding this trend line as well that I just drew out for you guys, you know, from the sell off in May, you know, the beginning of June, we started out at about 7,000 here on the NASDAQ, right? We pulled down 7,300. That was in the beginning of August, higher low again in the middle of August, another higher low towards the end of August. August, right? And now in the beginning of September, it seems like we're holding another higher low on top of this trend line again that I just drew for you guys. So guys, if we pop above this trend line tomorrow, let's, um, let's say, <clears throat> excuse me, we break above the 180. SMA, you know, this could be a very big breakout in terms of the NASDAQ. But the one thing that's kind of, um, you know, making me a bit skeptical that that's actually going to happen is the state of the economy that we're in, the state of the trade war. At the drop of a button, guys, literally, things can go down, right? If Trump tweets, if more tariffs are slapped, the market... You know, even though the technicals are telling us, hey, we might be pushing up, the market might dump because when things are going on in the macro economy and they're very, very, you know, uh, harsh on the market like the trade war is, the technicals go out the window for the most part, right? We may dump and then, you know, dump all the way down here to 7430 again and be like, okay, now we're definitely not riding this trend. Now we're definitely not uptrending, which is just honestly something that, um, to be uh, aware of and something to keep an eye on, especially when we're in these rocky time periods in the overall um, economy and obviously in the stock market as well. So that's kind of my thought here on the NQ. If we break it down a little bit on the on some of these smaller charts, you can see the trend line, you know, it's clearly riding it here as well, although it's very sloppy with all of these lines everywhere. Just look at the cursor right here on the screen. You know, it's riding that trend line from the longer term chart, but we're still trading below the moving averages here, even on the one hour chart. And I'm sure on the five day, five minute, we'll see a bunch of the same. Yup. You guys can see under the moving averages on the five day, five minute chart as well. So what I'd look for for a breakout is a pop on the smaller time frame here, the five day, five minute above the moving averages on the NASDAQ. So let's talk about the Dow Jones industrial average very quickly here, guys. Going over to the 184 hour, you guys can see this is actually similar to the S&P. We're tra uh, trending above the 50 SMA, but we're still trending below the 180 SMA on the four-hour chart. So we're kind of in between both of the moving averages here. Overall, if we zoom in a bit, we're holding the support at around $26,000. On the one-day, one-minute, we can see today we gapped down. We actually hit $26,000, and we had a triple bottom on it once twice, three times. That's a good sign here that, hey, we might be pushing up. This could be a bullish move. And that's exactly what we got, right? From there, we popped on the uh, intraday chart here. The moving averages went from being resistance levels to being support levels. We got the bullish cross here, the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA on the Dow intraday chart. That is a good sign. That's a good close for the Dow that, hey, we might uh, potentially be filling up the gap tomorrow with the way 
this ended up closing. And of course, the futures, guys, are super important. Watch the futures tomorrow pre-market. If they're gapping up green, there's a good chance the markets could run tomorrow. But let's say they're dumping, right? Let's say they're red. That could mean the gap down might continue. The downtrend that we've been on really since today could continue, right? On the five-day, five-minute, you guys can see the markets have been going up. But let's say, you know, the gap down continues tomorrow. We'll most likely notice that from the futures being red in the beginning of the day and how the market reacts and how the market goes through, uh, you know, out the gate in the beginning of the day, uh, 9.30 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard. And I'm sure it's obviously different time periods if you're in, um, you know, different parts of the world. So Dow Jones, guys, you know, we see on the five day, five minute it's kind of holding this uh, higher low here from the previous, right? Kind of similar to the S&P. On the 20-day, you guys can see it's holding literally kind of the same pattern as the S&P because on the S&P, we bottomed out on the 15th of August, and then we made higher lows in the middle of August or towards the end of August, rather, a couple of times. Let me just pull up the S&P. It's literally identical, right? Take a look at the S&P chart. Take a look at the Dow chart. It's literally identical. So now the fact that we are breaking out of the moving averages here on the one hour chart, we're actually holding them as a support. This is a pretty good sign that the Dow could end up popping and filling the gap tomorrow. But we just have to watch these futures, guys. We could end up popping up to 26,400. That is a level of resistance that I'm seeing here. But just keep an eye on those futures. So that's kind of the market breakdown for today. Um, I'd love to know what you guys have to think about the markets down below. Is this a bull trap? You know, is this setting up for a potential, you know, you know, people might go long tomorrow and then the markets dump, you know, is this trapping us? I would love to know what you guys have to think about that down below in the comment section. So let's talk about very briefly what I did today. And like I mentioned in my previous video, I think I uploaded the last on Sunday. I was in BAC Bank of America from last week. I got in at around 2720. And when I saw the market futures down a pretty decent chunk on Sunday, I was thinking to myself, crap, I'm in a bad trade right now because if the markets gap down like they did, most likely BAC is going to gap down and I'm going to be red in my position. So I didn't make the smartest move by you know, hopping into BAC, knowing the tariffs are going to kick in. That wasn't really a smart move on my part. And I ended up losing a bit of money today on BAC because, again, I didn't really thoroughly analyze it. I didn't really think it through 100%. That does happen sometimes, guys. And if we go to the five-day, five-minute, you guys can see what I'm talking about. So I got in, I believe it was this day or this day, whichever day, that doesn't really matter. But my average cost was 27.20, right? I got into BAC and I held it over the week weekend and then boom it fell right off the cliff hitting lows at about $26.70 and you guys can see you know if my average cost is $27.20 you know $27.25 it's roughly around that area you know if we're going down if we're selling off to $26.72 you know I'm already down 2% at that point but the fact that we jumped out of the gate very aggressively selling off I just cut my losses guys to be honest I just cut the losses right here because this was extremely aggressive. This was not even consolidating. It seems like every time it tried to consolidate and maybe pop up, it got hit, it got rejected even harder, and the selling started to kick in very, very aggressively. So I just took a little bit of a loss. Like I said in Sunday's video, I kind of predicted that I was going to do this, to be honest, because again, the futures were down. I figured BAC would be down and I would want to hop out just to be safe. And that's exactly what I ended up doing. I didn't lose a lot of money, right? I think I got out at about like 26.90 right around here, you know, 26.90 up to about 27.20. You can see that's about a 1.1, 1.2% loss. And that's okay, guys. You know, sometimes you lose money. Of course, sometimes you make money. It's all a part of the game here. So despite me losing money on BAC, it's actually one of the stocks that I'm going to be watching here um, on this potential pullback 
as a potential swing trade again, right? This could be an entry point tomorrow, opening up an entry point. If we do end up holding $27, holding this 180 SMA support tomorrow on this one hour chart, like we are right now at the close of the market, I think this could be a very uh, good opportunity for a re entry. And that's sometimes how it works, guys. You know, you take a little loss on a stock, right? You play it safe, and then you look at the stock again for potential re entry. It's not not revenge trading, it's making a sound decision if the stock's actually looking good again, right? If it was, you know, looking crappy, downtrending, I'm not, I would obviously not hop into it. But the fact that it is looking like it's holding a higher low here despite the massive dip, holding, you know, the uh, 180 SMA and on the smaller time frames, it's looking pretty decent as well. This breakout above the 50 SMA, this is giving me some signs that, hey, this might be a good opportunity to re-enter, but I'm going to wait and see how it goes tomorrow, how it's moving pre-market. That's very, very important. So that's actually one that I'm watching. So that's one breakdown of a stock there. You guys is another one that you guys saw in the title that I'm watching very heavily. And if you guys watch my video, Video on Sunday. What were we talking about with natural gas, guys? It's literally coming into life right now. It's coming into fruition. We were talking about the $2.40 resistance. And we zoom in here and I'll show you guys even further here and explain what I'm talking about. So we saw moving back a little bit, you know, uh, rewinding a little bit, 230 was a very strong resistance on natural gas, right? We noticed how in June it was a strong resistance. We dip below it, then popped, making it a new support. And then in July, the middle of July, we broke 230, making it a resistance again. And we actually got rejected towards the end of July again before selling off very frantically to $2.02 on natural gas. And we also got rejected again at 2.30 in the beginning of August. So there were multiple rejections in the past three, four months on natural gas, really the past three months at 2.30. And now that we've been reversing to the upside, 50 SMA is crossing the 180 SMA on the 184 hour chart. That's a bullish move there. We've been making higher lows ever since we bottomed down at 2.02. And again, we popped above 230. That's a good sign that we could be filling the gap back up to $2.40 here. Notice how we actually pulled down. Was this today? Yes, this was today. We pulled down and we confirmed 230 as a new support and we pushed to this higher high to 236, which is extremely, extremely important, guys. When I see a stock ETF, future, whatever it may be, when it breaks out of a resistance, the next thing I want to see it do is pull down and confirm that resistance as a new support or that old resistance as a new support, right? And natural gas did exactly that today, which is making uh, you guys honestly the most valuable ETF in my opinion or ETN rather over these next couple of days as long as natural gas holds the trend that it's on right now and for those of you guys that don't know what I'm talking about with natural gas and you gas well you gas is an ETF or an ETM that trades based upon natural gas it goes up whenever natural gas is going up at a 3x rate so let's say natural gas is up 3% you guys is going to be up 9%, right? That's how it works. So here we can see exactly what I'm talking about. We actually double bottomed, triple bottomed, actually maybe even a quadruple bottom here on 2.30 as a new support. One at 9.05 a.m. yesterday on Monday. Another one, 6 p.m. yesterday on Monday, and another one this morning, 5.25 a.m. This is all Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday, and then another one when the market was about to open at about 8.45 a.m., and that's when we shot up and pushed to that higher high, really just confirming and continuing the uptrend. So this is looking very juicy to me, guys. Honestly, if we go back to the 184 hour we might be pulling back a bit, as you're seeing here, this red candlestick. We might be pulling back a bit, maybe 233, whatever it may be, low 230s. But this could be a perfect entry point dip buy on you guys if natural gas continues the trend and fills up to 240. And let's go to you guys very quickly and see... You know, you guys was up 8% today. At one point, I think it was up 10, 11%. So you can see how big this moves when natural gas makes, 
you know, a decent move because, again, it's a 3x leveraged ETN. So you can see on the 20-day, you know, from $10 up to $16, that's quite a move over the past roughly month at this point. And if natural gas does make that pullback to the low uh, 230s, you know, this could go down to the low 15s, maybe, maybe 1520, maybe 1530. And this could be a very good dip buy, especially if we hold the 50 SMA as a support. And especially if natural gas again continues its trend. So that's kind of what I'm watching here with you guys and uh, with natural gas. Let's say we pop above 240. You know, we, we have to hold that as a support in that point in time. You know, if we do, then the next level I'm going to be watching on natural gas is going to be around. 248 to 250 which was a resistance from back in the beginning of July in 2019 so those are you know really the main points that I wanted to get across uh you know regarding to you guys and regarding to um natural gas that's what I'm watching that's personally what I'm waiting for to get into this trade I want to see a pullback potentially on natural gas and then get in on the dip uh tomorrow hopefully if everything does end up playing out so the next stock I want to talk about let me pull up my phone because I am blanking out right now on what that stock is um okay 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 uh Apple, guys, A-A-P-L, Apple is under pressure right now. There's no lie about that because Apple has a lot of its business tied up in China, the China and the U.S. relationship, the Chinese, the U.S. relationship right now, obviously isn't great. That's putting a lot of uh, damper on Apple, and I feel like it's kind of putting a cap on the stock right now um, on Apple, right? We can see, you know, the stock's not been doing well over the past couple of weeks. It's really not been going anywhere. But judging on the 20-day one hour, this could potentially be a point where we might see a little bit of a move to the upside here. And I actually drew these trend lines like a couple, um, like probably a week ago, and it ended up playing out exactly to these trend lines. Look, no joke, guys. I didn't draw this before this video. This was like a month or like a week ago, whatever. Uh, but just showing you guys, you know, we went down. We popped up. Now, we could do this, right? We could dump here if we break the trend line that I just drew. And the fact that we're holding the trend line that I just drew into the market close today, this could be a point in time where we potentially ride back up and retest $210 if we pop and break the 50 and the 180 SMA here on the one hour chart. This is very possible, right? We have to see if it's gapping up pre-market tomorrow. If the markets are green tomorrow, this is probably going to be a safe quote-unquote safe mini swing trade um back up to 210 because if the markets rally for a day or two apple could be very very good trade a very attractive position here again nothing safe guys hence why i put the quotations right nothing is safe in the market but this to 210 markets green apple usually does well when the markets are green that is something that could definitely happen here but if we break the trend that i just drew you know if we start pushing down this trend line that i drew last week might end up playing out and at that point Put options could be a decent play. Shorting the stock, although I never short stocks, that could be a good play for you maybe. And honestly, I won't be looking to swing trade it if that does end up happening. So Apple, I'm watching it, but certain things have to fall into place. Certain puzzle pieces have to line up, um, you know, for this to end up being a trade tomorrow. But of course, I'll let you guys know and we'll be talking about it, um, you know, in the Discord chat. So one more, actually two more very quickly before I do end off this video. I know this video is probably long right now, but all you loyal subscribers that are watching out there, I really appreciate you guys. You guys are the best. You guys are awesome. NVIDIA, this is actually a short term, uh, a short p a potential put option play, a short play if this ends up breaking the, uh, you know, the, the support of this wedge that I've drawn out here. And I actually drew this out and I was thinking to myself, you know, NVIDIA really could do one of two things at this point. If we zoom in a bit, you can see this wedge that I'm talking about, right? We hit a low of 130, Popped up here to a high at about 176 over the past couple of months. We pulled down, held the higher low at 150. We popped and we made a lower high from the previous at 177, right? You know, the lower high at 170, we hit another lower high at about 168, putting us in this wedge because we're making higher highs or rather we're making higher lows, but at the same time, we're making lower highs. So depending on which side we pop here on NVIDIA, 
we break out of the resistance, this could be bullish, right? Very bullish. But if we break below the support here, you know, if we break down into the 150s, this could be a very good put option, a very good short play. Um, honestly, that I'm going to be watching heavily, guys. But at this point, you know, NVIDIA, I feel like when it moves up, when it moves green, it's on fire, right? But then when it moves down, when it's red, it gets bashed, guys. It gets bashed 5% in, in a day down, 5% the next day. It, it just gets killed, right? We can see, you know, multiple scenarios of when the stock dropped heavily in the matter of a couple of trading days, right? You know, from 178 on the 23rd of July, it went all the way down to 145 on the 5th of August. That's like a 10-day move. It went down 30 bucks a share. That's insane, right? We can see here, you know, back in May, it went from 170 all the way down to 130. So this stock moves down heavily, which is why I'm thinking if it makes this downwards move here, this could be a very critical, you know, break and a very bearish uh, sign, right? That it might start selling off aggressively again, which we can profit on that downside if you know how to trade, um, the downside, right, which is very important as well, but probably a bit more advanced, um, you know, uh, an advanced strategy out there, which is, you know, trading options and trading um, short, uh, doing going short rather, which I, I never do, right? I never go short. I do put options sometimes, right, on long-term positions or stocks that are looking like they have a lot of downside. And in, in NVIDIA, this could definitely be one, you know, if we do get into that scenario that I just talked about. So JNUG, guys, before I end off, JNUG is one more that I want to talk about. I talked about this one in Sunday's video, ended up playing out perfectly to the way I talked about it, but I never got into it. But we held that 50 SMA on the four hour. We popped above it. Now it seems like we're fiddling with 95, 96, which is a resistance from last week, right? We're, we're fiddling around that area. And gold, if we look at gold very quickly, guys, we can see gold actually popped and it's retesting that resistance level at about 1555. 1560 that rough general area so we might pull down on gold we might hold that 50 sma as a support again we might hold 1545 who knows right but gold and gdx they need to continue to move gdx is what really jnug trades based upon right gdx goes up jnug's going up as well so if gdx and gold continue to move if the markets get rocky right the markets go down people are flooding to gold jnug could continue to be a very good play and uh you know honestly jnug might be touching 100 bucks again very very soon but be careful right if the markets go green right you know gold might go down a bit in the, in the near term which is why it's super important and as you guys probably have realized I watch stocks and I have different you know trading strategies for different scenarios in the market so I'm thinking okay the markets go up if you know you know, the trade war, you know, the sentiment becomes a bit more positive, which I don't think it's going to, but hypothetically speaking here, you know, Apple could be a swing trade that I'm looking at from 205 to 210, but let's say the markets end up getting rocky, volatile, gold starts to push because that's what usually happens when the markets get rocky and volatile. I have JNUG, right? I have JNUG that I can go to and make money on the downside. And of course, I have market ETFs that I watch. TVIX is a volatility ETN, goes up up when the markets go down when there's a lot of volatility so it's very important to just have a bunch of different um plans lined up strategies lined up for different scenarios in the market so you can make money when the markets are green you can make money when the markets are red that's very very important so i'm going to wrap up the video here guys if you enjoyed it if you found value in it feel free to go down below and hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me and drop a comment down below let me know your thoughts on the market what are you trading? What stocks are you watching coming up? And where's the market going, guys? I want to know your opinion. Is it going red right now? Is it going green? Let me know down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I appreciate all of you guys watching. You mean a lot to me. Peace out.